How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Mother Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to focus on the next potential tropical cyclone that could develop somewhere between the Caribbean Sea as well as the Gulf of Mexico where we could see tropical storm Bonnie form out of this disturbance that we could see into next week. But well, before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather delay calls and make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather delay content. So to begin, let's take a look at the computer models and of course we've been talking about Tropical Storm Alex over the past several days. What well, recently has became Tropical Storm Alex. It took a while for it to really develop a very well-defined and small center of circulation for it to be considered Tropical Storm Alex, but it has developed and now it's a 70 mile per hour tropical storm borderline a hurricane and it's expecting to move just north of bermuda so bermuda watch out for tropical storm conditions for um, later today and into tonight so make sure to keep that in mind but beyond bermuda this should pretty much move out to sea and not be much of a threat to anyone but looking into next week we could see our next possibility of a tropical wave developing into potentially tropical storm body so the first let's take a look at the gfs model so if we were to continue move forward for i'd say the next five to six days it pretty much looks quiet the national hurricane center isn't really forecasting any sort of tropical cyclone development within the next five days as really there isn't any well-defined low pressure system that's in the atlantic that does have a high possibility of developing into something because currently the wind shear is too strong. It's of course common during the early part of the hurricane season, and there's just a lot of dry air as well. Very um, a lot of stable air, and we don't see a lot of low pressure systems originate from the main development region, which is a region prominent that prominently develops tropical cyclones however that could change into early next week because if i were to continue to move forward um you're probably noticing all this moisture that's pretty much um swallowing the large portion of central america and a lot of this moisture is moving into the eastern pacific as well so those along the pacific coast also need to be aware of the potential of a uh, tropical cyclone developing of course we saw hurricane agatha make landfall as a category two right around southern mexico so um you certainly could get those early powerful eastern um pacific tropical cyclones that could make landfall along the pacific coast of central america so you need to watch out for that but of course we also need to pay close attention to the atlantic especially when it comes to the United States impact because if a tropical cyclone develops somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico or Caribbean, chances are it could impact the United States. So um, like, I, like I said, there's a lot of moisture coming from the equatorial region of South America and it's moving slightly to the Northwest and some of this moisture could and some of this convection could create an area where the air pressure is low enough to where we could see a well-defined low pressure system develop off of some of this convection and thunderstorm activity we're seeing in right around the caribbean so if i were to continue to move forward the gfs model right around i'd say the six day mark is forecasting a plume of extra moisture moving northward into the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico right around the Sunday time frame around June 12th, which is definitely something to keep in mind. We do see a large plume of moisture and that's of course something we're gonna need to be aware of any time during the hurricane season. When we do see a plume of moisture, that typically means that there's a lot of convection and the air pressure is low enough to where it could develop into something really all depends on how much dry air and wind shear there is but if i were to continue to move even more forward you see that the gfs model does develop a broad center of circulation as this is the typical area where a lot of june tropical cyclones do develop they originate from a lot of moisture that moves northwestward from the equatorial region of south 
America and we typically see tropical cyclones develop off of a gyre that's typical during the summer months of Central America where it's considered winter over there because it rains so much and it's so cloudy to where the temperature stays low right around Central America despite technically being the summer month in the north northern hemisphere but the, this gyre typically does originate a lot of tropical cyclones for the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico during the month of June and this could be one of those possibilities we do have a broad low pressure system located just off the Yucatan Peninsula based off based on what the GFS model is forecasting and if I were to continue to move even forward which I don't typically like to do because it definitely does become extremely uncertain once you go past the 200 hour mark we do see that the GFS model does develop a tropical storm out of this gyre and we see another possibility even further than that but take this with a huge grain of salt because it's over the 200 hour mark but if we were to move to a forecast that's more certain we know that likely by the early week next week we will see a plume of moisture move into the caribbean northwestward so this is one of those things that um where if this does develop it won't impact land because if this does develop it does pose a threat for central america and potentially the gulf of mexico states which is something to be aware of um of course i don't like to give a forecast that's super uncertain um certain um you um you guys probably want more certainty with the forecast but i want to at least um keep you guys aware even if it's a long-term forecast because um this is what this channel is all about i want to i want you guys to be the first to know if there's any sort of imminent threat when it comes to the hurricane season and this could be our next imminent threat right around the 160 hour mark which is around six to seven days from now we do see a plume of moisture which is something we're going to need to be aware of because this does have a possibility of developing into a tropical cycle now there's still of course a high amount of uncertainty right around the seven day mark um, um for something that's six seven days away but if we were to take a look at the amount of humidity that's going to be in the atmosphere at this time you see that there isn't going to be a lot of dry air to entrain this area of course this could change within the next several days we could see maybe a little bit more dry air to the northwest of it but as of now the gfs model isn't forecasting dry air to be much of a threat um to this um to this um from to keep it from developing and if we were to take a look at the upper level winds we do have a decent amount of wind shear that's going to dominate, I'd say, the Gulf of Mexico for quite some time. However, what's interesting is that the Southern Caribbean never really experiences a strong amount of wind shear, which does um, which does increase the chance of a tropical cyclone developing within this small area, which is definitely something to keep in mind. We have this stationary upper level high that's keeping it um nearly um this that's keeping this area nearly a shear free environment which could be our next imminent threat for tropical cyclone development but of course again we need to wait and see if this holds up over the next several days and the wind shear and dry air even if that's even if both factors are in uh in favor of tropical cyclone development we also need to pay it could completely be offset by the fact that this deals with land interaction which is another possibility if this does end up taking a further westward track where it does impact more of central the mountainous areas of central america which definitely could inhibit its um, development if it were to take a uh, track further westward so a lot of the questions to be answered and um, really all depends on the position of this upper level low and this upper level high that really all that really will um, determine the amount of wind shear this plume of moisture will experience but there is maybe that possibility that we could see tropical cycle development into early next week and i want you guys to at least be aware of that now you're probably wondering what's the certainty with this um, when we compare it to the european model the european model at this time isn't as lenient as a gfs model when it comes to developing a wall to find low pressure system just off of central america but it is also leaning towards the fact that we're going to see a plume of moisture an extra plume of moisture come right around the six to seven day mark which does at least show that 
we're likely going to experience an in, in, enhanced amount of convection um, throughout the southwestern portion of the Caribbean into next week, which does, of course, enhance the chance of tropical cyclone formation. And it's something to at least be aware of. So make sure to keep that in mind. Taking a look at the 12Z run. Um, let me show you guys actually the um, precipitation map, Western Atlantic, um, to zoom in a little bit more. And if I were to show you guys the precipitation map, while there isn't the European model doesn't want to develop a well-defined low pressure system, look, we do see a plume of moisture move right around the 160 hour mark. So there is that maybe that possibility we could see tropical cyclone development out of this. So keep that in mind into next week. Still a lot of uncertainty. But I'll make sure to update you guys over the next several days um, as we get we continue to gain more certainty. Um, as the next couple of days go by so keep that in mind and at least be aware of this because it could be something to watch over the next several days now another thing that would be in favor of tropical cycle formation would be the mjo pattern because if we were to take a look at the mjo filtered um, forecast for today you see that we're in the dark blues which represents more favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development which represents more lift in the atmosphere and the mjo pattern typically varies between a 30 to 60 day period where um in one period that lasts one period typically lasts around 30 60 days so you see that into next week we're all we're still in the blues which represents that tropical cyclone de um, development is more favorable for next week as well which would favor um a tropical cyclone developing so that's definitely something in its favor as well and the sea surf temperatures i'm um, taking a look at that um sea surf temperatures are much warmer than average just off the southern caribbean so that won't be much of a worry at all when it comes to this tropical cyclone potentially developing and here's the area where this next tropical storm could develop which would be tropical storm bonding but still high uncertainty that um of this forecast it pretty much um the, the area of development pretty much begins right just off the coast of costa rica to where potentially the Gulf of Mexico, as late as the Gulf of Mexico, we could see tropical cyclone development. So don't panic just yet. Um, still a lot of uncertainty, but just be aware that there could be that possibility of a tropical cyclone. So keep that in mind um, throughout the Caribbean and the Gulf Coast. Um, now, taking a look back at Tropical Storm Alex, we do see that it's a 70 mile per hour storm and it's moving fast to the east northeast at 28 miles per hour. So it's only a matter of time before it does reach Bermuda at this time as tropical storm warnings are issued. And you see that the wind field is quite large um, and it's pretty much due to the fact that this has evolved some extra tropical characteristics so the wind field of course will expand but in Bermuda make sure to pit um to be prepared for very gusty winds and um a strong and a strong amount of storm surge possible in the more vulnerable areas so make sure to keep that in mind but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys have a great day